The World Anti-Slavery Convention met for the first time at Exeter Hall in London, on 12–23 June 1840. It was organised by the British and Foreign Anti-Slavery Society, largely on the initiative of the English Quaker Joseph Sturge. The exclusion of women from the convention had important ramifications for the women's suffrage movement in the United States. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Background. The Society for the Abolition of the Slave Trade was principally a Quaker society founded in the 18th century by Thomas Clarkson. The slave trade had been abolished throughout the British Empire in 1807. In August 1833 the British government passed the Slavery Abolition Act, advocated by William Wilberforce, which abolished slavery in the British Empire from August 1834, when some 800,000 people in the British Empire became free. Similarly, in the 1830s many women and men in America acted on their religious convictions and moral outrage to become a part of the abolition movement. Many women in particular responded to William Lloyd Garrison's invitation to become involved in the American Anti-Slavery Society. They were heavily involved, attending meetings and writing petitions. Arthur Tappan and other conservative members of the society objected to women engaging in politics publicly. One, Given the perceived need for a society to campaign for anti-slavery worldwide, the British and Foreign Anti-Slavery Society was accordingly founded in 1839. One of its first significant deeds was to organize the World Anti-Slavery Convention in 1840. Our expectations, we confess, were high, and the reality did not disappoint them. The preparations for this event had begun in 1839, when the Society circulated an advertisement inviting delegates to participate in the convention. Over 200 of the official delegates were British. The next largest group was the Americans, with around 50 delegates. Only small numbers of delegates from other nations attended. The circular message, distributed in 1839, provoked a controversial response from American opponents of slavery. The Garrisonian faction supported the participation of women in the anti slavery movement. They were opposed by the supporters of Arthur and Louis Tappan. When the latter group sent a message to the BFASS opposing the inclusion of women, a second circular was issued in February 1840 which explicitly stated that the meeting was limited to gentlemen. Despite an earlier statement that women would not be admitted, many American and British female abolitionists, including Lucretia Mott, Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Lady Byron, appeared at the World Anti-Slavery Convention in London. Wendell Phillips proposed that female delegates should be admitted, and much of the first day of the convention was devoted to discussing whether they should be allowed to participate. Published reports from the convention noted, The upper end and one side of the room were appropriated to ladies, of whom a considerable number were present, including several female abolitionists from the United States. The women were allowed to watch and listen from the spectators' gallery but could not take part. 2. Benjamin Robert Hayden painted the Anti-Slavery Society Convention, 1840, a year after the event 3, that today is in the National Portrait Gallery. This very large and detailed work shows Alexander as treasurer of the new society. The painting portrays the 1840 meeting and was completed the next year. 
The New Society's mission was the universal extinction of slavery and the slave trade and the protection of the rights and interests of the enfranchised population in the British possessions and of all persons captured as slaves. Topic: Proceedings incomplete. The Convention's organizing committee had asked the Reverend Benjamin Godwin to prepare a paper on the ethics of slavery. The Convention unanimously accepted his paper which condemned not just slavery but also the world's religious leaders and every community who had failed to condemn the practice. The Convention resolved to write to every religious leader to share this view. The convention called on every religious communities to eject any supporters of slavery from their midst. George William Alexander reported on his visits in 1839, with James Whitehorn, to Sweden and the Netherlands to discuss the conditions of slaves in the Dutch colonies and in Suriname. In Suriname, he reported, there were over 100,000 slaves with an annual attrition rate of 20%. The convention prepared open letters of protest to the respective sovereigns. Joseph Pease spoke and accused the British government of being complicit in the continuing existence of slavery in India. Legacy After leaving the convention on the first day, being denied full access to the proceedings, Lucretia Mott and Elizabeth Cady Stanton, "...walked home arm in arm, commenting on the incidents of the day, and we resolved to hold a convention as soon as we returned home, and form a society to advocate the rights of women." Eight years later they hosted the Seneca Falls Convention in Seneca Falls, New York. Four One hundred years later the Women's Centennial Congress was held in America to celebrate the progress that women had made since they were prevented from speaking at this conference. <laughs> Incomplete list of delegates and women who attended